In the previous two videos, we learned about the ref and reactive functions which return a reactive reference that can be stored in a constant. But what exactly do we mean by reactive reference? I want to help you understand that in this video. Again, this is best understood with an example, so let me show you with a demo the reactivity feature in view. In the components folder, I'm going to create a new file called demo1.view. Within the file, I'm going to use the snippet vbase CSS to create a component. The name is going to be demo1. In this component, let's add the setup method so as to use the composition APIs. Now within this method, I'm going to create a constant called name and set it to Vishwas. I'm going to return this constant and bind it to the template. If we save the file, include it in app component and take a look at the browser, we can see Vishwas being displayed. Now if this works, what then is the need for the ref function? Well, let me show that to you with a contrived scenario. Let's say after two seconds, we need to update this name property to code evolution. So within the setup method, I'm going to add a set timeout. This is going to execute after two seconds and we are going to set name is equal to code evolution. However, the linter throws an error that constant value cannot be changed. So let's change const to let to fix this. If I now save the file and head back to the browser, refresh and wait for two seconds, you can see that Vishwas does not change to code evolution. If I go back to the set timeout, log the name variable to the console and head back, you can see that after two seconds, the name is in fact code evolution, but the UI is not reflecting that. This is where the ref function and views distinct reactivity feature comes into picture. When we use a simple let or const declaration to store a value, view doesn't know how to react to changes in the value. Ref, on the other hand, lets view know that the value changed and in the template, wherever name is used, it has to be updated. So let's see that in action. In the script block, import ref from view, change let back to const, and call the ref function passing in vishwas, and within said timeout, update name dot value. If we now go back to the browser and refresh, after two seconds, Vishwas updates to code evolution. View is reacting to changes in the name and updating the DOM. And this is exactly what happens with the reactive function as well. So that is the first point I wanted to cover in this video about reactivity in view. The next point is regarding the reactive function and a small improvement that can be done when using the function. Let me create a new file in the components folder. Demo2.view Use the vbase CSS snippet to create a component and let's name this Demo2. Next, let's add some composition API code to define and display a first name as well as a last name. So set up and then at the top import reactive from view. Within the setup method invoke the reactive function passing in an object. The object contains two properties. First name set to Bruce and last name set to Wayne. Let's store this reference in a constant called state. 
We can now return this state constant and use it in the template. Turn state and in the template state dot first name followed by state dot last name. If you now save the file, include it in app component and take a look at the browser, we see the text Bruce Wayne. Now this works fine, but if we take a look at the template, we have to access the properties first name and last name using state followed by the dot notation. This wasn't the case when we use the data option from the options API. So if we had data which returns an object with two properties, f name and l name, in the template we could simply bind them as f name and l name. We didn't have to use data.f name and data.l name. So can we do the same with reactive function reference? Well, the answer is yes. In the return object, instead of returning state, let's return first name, which is equal to state.firstName, and last name, which is equal to state.lastName. In the template, we can now bind just first name and last name. In the browser, we still see Bruce Wayne. However, in doing this, we've actually introduced a bug in our code. In the setup method, let's try to update the first name and last name using a set timeout. So set timeout runs after two seconds and we update state.firstName is equal to Clark and state.lastName is equal to Kent. Let's also console log the state constant. If you now head back to the browser, refresh and wait for two seconds, we don't see Bruce Wayne change to Clark Kent. And why does this happen? Again, it comes down to the feature of reactivity in Vue. When we return state, Vue knows that it has to react to changes in the state object. But when we return the individual property values from the state object, Vue does not know that it has to react to changes in the individual property values. And that is why the UI never updates. To solve this issue, Vue provides another function which is the toRefs function. All we have to do is import it from Vue and when returning our state, return the toRefs function passing in state. The toRefs function preserves the reactivity for the individual properties in this state object. If we now go back to the browser and refresh, you can see that Bruce Wayne updates to Clark Kent. All right, that is pretty much what I wanted to cover about the reactivity feature and the two refs function in Vue. Hopefully, you now have a better understanding of how Vue works. Well then, in the next video, let's understand how to replace the methods option using the composition API. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.